Good morning. It actually is very, very good, as Melissa said, to be back here amongst our people. Um, uh, we, we grew up in Montana, lived 24 years in Wyoming, and then God sent us to Arkansas. Um, <laughs> we don't feel like we fit in. <laughs> yes. Uh, I told him it's not going to work because as far as I know, I'm not blood related to my wife and we both still have all our teeth. So. <laughs> Hopefully nobody here is really right. Is anybody about. here from the south? <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> um, it is hot and humid down there. Uh, just a different world, but it is neat in its own way. God created all of it. So, uh, as Rex said, uh, my name is Brady. This is Melissa, my lovely wife, and we've been married 28 years. Good job. Uh, and they weren't all good. That's part of our story. Uh, I lived a very selfish life. I didn't get saved until I was 30, and I nearly destroyed our family. And that's how God led us into uh, this ministry. We, uh, let's see, we have two kids, a 19-year-old son and a 22-year-old daughter, right? I got to keep remembering that. It gets hard to remember all these dates and numbers. Um, and... Uh, Let's see, I guess we'll give them, should we give them a, a fast, super quick version of our life? Sure. Okay. So we got married and we did, uh, life was great. We were doing what every young couple does. We we're focused on careers and family and, uh, and that works until it doesn't work. And that's what happened when, when the inevitable struggles of relationships come up, which up until now, we, everybody we've talked to said happens in every marriage and every relationship. You encounter problems. And when you start encountering those, if you don't have Christ to turn to, you turn towards the world. And that's the wrong thing to do. And that's what I did. And uh, came to a point in my life uh, where I ended up having an affair. And I was faced with losing everything that I cared for, everything that I loved. And that's when I fell to my knees and I begged God to come into my life and be Lord of my life. And we started a very long and painful road to recovery. Yeah, I had been praying for Brady's salvation for two years. I had gotten back into church and um, I knew that Brady needed the Lord. And um, as I prayed for him, I didn't realize how that answer was going to come and how it was going to rock my world. But as I trusted the Lord and I hit that Garden of Gethsemane moment where I was literally sweating those drops of blood and this is not my will, Lord. This is not the life I signed up for. This is not the marriage I thought I would have. I had a choice of surrendering to what I knew he was calling me to do, which was to love my husband through his worst. And as I made that choice and surrendered to that and was able to love Brady, and um, rebuild our marriage, I'm so thankful that the love of Christ can bridge our brokenness. He did that for me, and he did it for Brady, and then he did it between us, and he continues to do it every day. That's what he is. He's a restorer and a redeemer, and he covers our sin with his love and his grace and his mercy, and as we get to live that out, that beautiful restoration, and as we live that out in our lives, God then called us into prison ministry, and we began to see the massive effect of broken homes in our society. Every single one of those ladies has a horrific story of abuse and abandonment and brokenness in their homes that leads to a lot of the decay in their life and the choices they make. And, and it really broke our hearts. We realized that we had both come from broken families and the roots that it had to a lot of the choices we had made and where we had ended up. And we began to decide we needed to do something about it. How do you get on the front end of all this brokenness? We had couples in crisis coming to us and saying, how did you fix your marriage? Help us. And that was great. We saw eight out of 10 um, marriages in the aftermath of affair completely restored in a two-year period. And we give God all the praise, but we're like, how, how do we get on the front end of this? How do we keep people from experiencing this brokenness and this pain? How do we change so that a family raises up strong, healthy relationships so that they don't have to experience the pain and brokenness that we have. And that began the journey of us saying a prayer of, God, 
we're willing to surrender everything we have. We don't have a retirement build up like we hoped. We don't have um, really the desire to move outside of our state. We don't really have any of these things other than we care about families, and we're willing to surrender our lives to full-time missions and serve families and see families restored and helped if you'll show us how. And seven days later, we ended up at an event called A Weekend to Remember. Yeah, so A Weekend to Remember is Family Life's uh, two-and-a-half-day marriage intensive. And we had heard about it and thought, man, that's, we need to go. That would be really great. It's a, it's, it's not just for marriages in crisis, it's a marriage enrichment. And we were working with this couple and we knew that uh, they needed to kind of get out of their environment. They needed a few days away to focus and we knew they wouldn't go unless we went with them. So that was the plan. We scooped them up and went to Estes Park and went to the weekend to remember. While we were there, we were just networking and talking to the Family Life folks and asking for advice, and, and they started kind of asking us about our life and what we did, and so we told them our story, and they said, you need to come to this uh, breakout session. We thought it was to volunteer for a uh, weekend to remember, which we thought would be great, uh, but we quickly found out they actually were looking for full-time missionaries, and um, we realized, uh, I'm, I'm going to fast forward this, we, th through a, a, a little series of events there, we realized God was answering that prayer of uh, what, you know, we, we asked God, what, what would that look like? Well, we can't do this on our own. And one thing led to another, and Family Life asked us to become full-time missionaries. And so we did. I stepped away from a 24-year career with the Game and Fish, which I loved absolutely every single day of it, right to the day that I quit. But God had put a burden on my heart, something that I needed to do and wanted to do. And that led us uh, to this point right here. Yeah. So we surrendered to full-time missions almost two years ago now. Um, took a little over a year, year and a half to raise our support, and we reported to Little Rock last July, which is where the Family Life headquarters are. Just out of curiosity, how many of you here are familiar with Family Life? Okay, so not, so not very many. So just a little bit of background. We'll play you a little bit more of a video here, but Family Life is a, a family and marriage organization, and our mission is that every home would be a godly home that we could effectively develop godly marriages and homes that would then have a ripple effect on their communities and change our world. That is our goal. So we produce materials. We have thousands of resources. There's a few back out on the table today. Um, but we also host large events, and then we come alongside churches and help churches develop more effective family and marriage ministry. That is what we do. Our hope is to get back to Wyoming. We really feel like God is leading us back here within the next year, and that is, um, we would ask that you would pray for that with us. Um, Wyoming does not have a lot of marriage and family support in the state, at least faith-based, and we would like to help develop that, and that is our heart's desire is to get back here and do that. Um, but do you want to go ahead and show the, the Family Life video, yep. introduce you a little bit more to more of what we do in Family Life, so that first video that we have. I had finally succeeded in burning it all down. You know, my, my wife, um, my career, my relationship with my son, you know, the beautiful home we had built together, it just, it was just gone. Raising kids today is so hard. One parent is going this way, another parent's going another way, and you still don't have that connection for all, all of you to be together. If you don't get the truth about marriage and the resources, then you can't be married the right way and it will be broken. A strong marriage is the foundation of a strong family. What happens in your marriage today impacts your children and generations to come. It's scary to hear your parents fight. I've had a couple of times when the younger girls have come to me and asked me very, very pointed, specific questions about why, are, why can't mommy live with us. No family will ever be any stronger than this relationship right here. It is this commitment that really is the headwaters of the, the stream called family. Sadly, most children from broken or dysfunctional homes report lonelier, less protected, and more stress-filled childhoods.
Every 13 seconds, another family is affected by divorce. Are we okay with this? Total cost to American society due to broken homes is $112 billion per year. That's $213,000 every minute of every day. Is that a price we are willing to pay? 85% of inmates come from fatherless homes. What can be done? Over 40% of children today are born to unmarried women. Who will help? We know what this brokenness feels like. Infidelity, pornography, childhood pain, the effects of divorce. This was our family at one time. I imagine that you have seen broken families around you too. In our culture, when something is broken, we throw it away. In Japanese culture, they have a tradition called kintsugi, in which they take broken pottery and repair it with gold or silver, understanding that the piece is more beautiful for having been broken. In the face of intense cultural pressures on the family, there is hope. Although there is tremendous competition for the hearts and minds of our children, there is more we can be doing to help. Family Life is dedicated to providing practical, applicable help for families. With resources for all life stages, Family Life empowers husbands, wives, moms, dads, and children to overcome life struggles. We believe in rebuilding families by strengthening them with God's timeless biblical principles. We are the Vandenbergs, and God has called us to be part of this help and hope for families. The decline of the American family is one of the most pressing challenges of the 21st century. We are so excited to be part of Family Life's mission to change the world one home at a time. Family Life is here to help. Over the past three decades, Family Life has been leading a marriage movement that started in the U.S. and has spread around the globe, helping over two million people in over 100 countries. Over 9 million people weekly are listening to Family Life's radio programs, receiving practical counsel on marriage and family issues. She, she had about an hour long commute every day. So she listened to the radio, she listened to Family Life and Family Life Today, and um, she had heard about the weekend to remember on the radio. And she said, you know, before we go any further in this, we're going to a weekend. <laughs> I'm so thankful. What we didn't realize is, is what every family needs. Just the tools and the resources, the truth and the hope that Family Life offers to, to couples like us who are struggling. Honestly, it's made my parents a, like so much stronger. I like when my dad comes home and he gets out of his work clothes and on his uh, exercise clothes and we go out and play some basketball. It has just enriched the family dynamic uh, to no end. Family Life is now ready to equip you with the tools and resources you need to build godly character in your family, your community, in your church, and in your world. I think because of the needs of marriages and families today, there's an opportunity for you to invest your time, your talent, and your treasure as never before to make a difference in marriages and families here in America and around the world. Oh, thanks, buddy. Family life. Help for today. Hope for tomorrow. If you would like to learn more about Family Life and our mission to change the world one home at a time, please go to FamilyLife.com. So we're really excited too. Family Life is putting a lot more effort in strengthening our, our mission uh, into what we call local movements. That's one good thing that's come out of COVID is, uh, although a bunch of our major events were shut down because we can't have large gatherings, we have poured a lot of our attention and time and energy into local movements. And we're really excited about that. And uh, it is uh, truly raising up an army in every community to have an impact. And it doesn't mean you have to be uh, full-time missionaries like Melissa and I, although we, we do need more missionaries, uh, the workload is heavy, uh, but there is opportunity for what we call affiliate staff, which is kind of a, a part-time deal, 
and then also volunteer staff. So if you guys uh, have any interest at all, uh, please uh, get a hold of us. We've got a few brochures that talk about it, and we'd love to, to connect you with Family Life. That's what it's all about, is uh, strengthening the communities and having this kind of resource available in every church and every community. So a little bit of clarification about this afternoon, just real quick. Um, the workshop that we're having from 12 to 3, the first two hours is going to be geared towards anyone, family, if you're widowed, it doesn't matter. If, you're, if you speak out of your mouth and you're communicating, it's going to be about communication and how important it is and how we use it and how we can use it effectively. Um, especially helpful for, I think, anybody about 13 and older that's learning communication skills and would have about a two-hour attention span with a break in there and some, a little bit of work in there um, to learn how to communicate better. Um, communication is 90% of, of what we do, and admittedly, most people admit I'm not very good at it at times, especially when emotions arise or different things come up, and I would like to do better. So it's just going to be a communication workshop with a conflict resolution tool that we're going to teach you when you do hit those conflict times. You're going to have a guide and um, a tool to use that will really help you work through those without them, them becoming conflict resolution rather than a fight, a reoccurring fight. And then in the last hour of the afternoon, we're going to build with married couples only in that last hour. We're going to build on that conflict resolution tool you used, give you an opportunity to do an exercise and actually practice um, where you can ask some questions and have some help and actually work through some things on your own and have a little bit of coaching with us. So that's what the afternoon looks like. If you have any questions, let us know. And um, if you have any questions on the resources that are in the back or anything, you can ask us later. Like I said, we have thousands of resources. And if you're looking for something in particular, we probably have something that would help that I, I don't have even close to all of the resources out there. So, And one last thing I'm going to pass around before Brady takes over a clipboard. If you would like to receive our newsletter of where we're at and how you could pray for us and what's going on in the ministry, um, just sign your name on there. And we'd love to send you our um, e-newsletter. Was that it? Did I cover it? Yep, I think okay. so. <laughs> and Sorry. for the workshop this afternoon, we're going to give away stuff. Sorry, online folks. <laughs> um, but we're going to give away some, some resources, and I think my wife even got some candy and pop for any of the kids or kids at heart to, uh, to enjoy. So uh, please stick around. You'll, uh, you can get... You, you'll get something out of it by listening online, but you'll get a whole lot more out of it, and it'll be a lot more fun if you're actually here in person. So, Okay, let me get this opened up. So I spilled pop or something on my computer, and the shift key, you have to push it, and then you have to wait until it slowly comes back up. So it's great fun. It's not so bad when you're just typing in your password, but it's really annoying when you're actually trying to type. I should um, clean it, but I'm, af I'm afraid to take it apart because a lot of times I take things apart and I can't get them back together. So, Okay, so I just want to spend some time talking about the importance of family. Now, I probably won't have to uh, work too hard to convince you, uh, and I'm going to refer to this a lot in that all we need to do is turn on the news today, and we're going to see example after example after example of the end result of the breakdown of the American family. Our families are the core of our society. They're the, they're the foundation of the church. The, the church will fall apart unless we have strong families, and society will follow uh, and we feel that right now, the greatest opportunity to reach the world for Christ is through the family. We, Melissa and I have seen a tremendous uh, willingness and a tremendous eagerness of people looking for something else. They're starting to realize that what the world has to offer is leading to emptiness. And so they're very open to spiritual conversations. So we feel this is an incredible opportunity for the church to uh, reach the, the community in the world. Our nation is in a crisis. Again, I, if I have to work very hard to convince you of that, you've been out of touch. I know we're in Wyoming kind of a little withdrawn from the rest of the world, but 
We are, we are facing a crisis, and it's not just an economic crisis or racial crisis. Uh, this is, we're in a crisis of morality. That's, that's the foundation of this, is we have lost our moral compass in this world. I stumbled upon an, an article the other day, and it talked about the importance of family in society. This was not a Christian article. This was a secular article written by somebody who is not a believer. So I'm going to walk you and take a few minutes and just walk you guys through this. Uh, so in, in this article, uh, they quoted a, a, a diagram that a guy named Abram Maslow uh, constructed called the Hierarchy of Needs. And in that pyramid, the bottom layer of the pyramid is the basic needs, such as food, shelter, and water. So this is talking about what families provide, the importance of a family. So that very basic need is, as a family, we uh, provide food, shelter, and water for our loved ones. The second layer is that security, the feeling of security and belonging. And security in the in the top layer top layer is the love and belonging. So, right right there, just that he he had made no mention of anything biblical. But as we know, we can uh, turn to the Bible, and in First Timothy five eight, it says, "Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever." It's kind of funny how even though they try and leave God out of this, the foundation for this is actually in the Bible. Another very important thing that this article highlighted about a family is that it provides a built-in support system. Uh, Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. In a, for a time of adversity. So once again, the world recognizes the importance of the family, but God's the one who designed it. Uh, the article goes on to talk about some of the health benefits. So kind of referring back to some of the, those basic needs, uh, we provide that food, shelter, water, uh, meals. Uh, it's, it's proven that a family tends to eat uh, better meals, healthier meals, than, than a single person would. Uh, families tend to be more active. And families tend to be more likely to get medical attention. So when you have loved ones around you, they're urging you. How many, how many husbands here have heard their wife say, you need to go to the doctor, you need to go to the doctor, when typically we wouldn't go to the doctor? So there is those health benefits. People who live with children tend to live longer and eat healthier. Now, some of that's probably because we are telling our kids they need to eat healthier, so therefore we uh, feel like we should set the example. Uh, we also probably tied to that. You're more likely to quit smoking, quit drinking, and be more active if you are part of a family. And families also, I, I found this really interesting, a secular article recognized that uh, the, this benefit of families to society is the care of fa family members when old or ill. Society has recognized that there's a tremendous burden on the, the community when family members are, are not able to take care of uh, elderly or uh, those that are disabled. So that's the secular view, uh, and, and we find out uh, that God also has an opinion on that. Funny enough, Exodus 20.12 says, Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land that your, lo your Lord God is giving you. Now, that verse gets used a lot when we're talking to young people, right? You've probably heard that one before. Honor your father and mother, right? We're all children. My, my mom calls me her little boy still, and I'm sure each and every one of you, if your parents are alive, you're still a child to somebody. And so it's not just 
for little kids. And I think God has some, uh, so a very strong uh, opinion about it and a strong promise in it and that he will bless us in that. So God values the, the family. So we talked about uh, taking care of family members reduces a burden on society. Uh, something else that this secular article pointed out is that parents tend to be more involved in the school and the community than somebody who wouldn't. Obviously the school, but just in general in the community. Parents are more willing to volunteer and get involved in activities uh, when you have a family. Uh, we also are, uh, parents are also very important in teaching kids that if you want to have an impact on your community and influence them, influence the community, you need to get involved. So there's that benefit of encouraging community involvement. Parents are also actually more likely to donate their time and energy to community events. So actually, People raising families are actually giving more money on average than uh, single or retired people. And families tend to care more about reducing crime in their neighborhoods. Once again, turn on the news, and I think we're going to see a huge need for this. So Matthew 19, 19 says, honor your father and mother. Father and mother. We hear that again. But it says, and... Love your neighbor as yourself. So that goes beyond just our own family. It's, it's, God is showing the, the importance of the family on the rest of the community. So here's another uh, really interesting thing we, uh, that the secular article pointed out is that families are really important on educating our children. Even in a society where uh, the, the, uh, we think that parents have no value in educating it and the, the government needs to do it. This article recognized that families are incredibly important in educating our children. One of the ways we do that is we model behavior. And those dinner table discussions that seem to be uh, going by the wayside are incredibly important. Again, this, remember, this is a secular article written by the world that they say that is incredibly important in raising our children. And, and when I saw that modeling behavior, it just really struck me. Because again, turn on the news. And is this the kind of behavior that we as parents have modeled? Is that the, the conflict resolution that we have modeled in society is that we feel that this is the, the proper way to react. It's horrifying. Uh, families are important in teaching children manners and respect. Again, we don't see very much of that when we turn on the news. <laughs> families are important in resolving conflicts. If, if our average American family is resolving conflicts in the way that we see reflected on the news, we are in serious trouble. Obeying laws. Again, families and parents are incredibly important in teaching children to obey laws. Whether you agree with them or not, there needs to be law and order. Again, it looks like we have not done a very good job of that. And families are incredibly important in, in teaching teamwork. But we also see that God had already figured this out before the guy who wrote this article. Uh, Proverbs 6, 20 through 23 says, My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you wake, they will speak to you. For this command is a lamp, this teaching is a light, and correction and instruction are the way of life. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not return from it. So we're going to roll into another uh, testimony video, but I just want to leave you guys with the importance of family. And as we saw earlier, family life 
strongly believes the strength of the marriage is the, is the headwaters, it's the strength of the family. The strength of the family is the strength of our churches. And the strength of our churches is what's going to strengthen our communities and impact this world. And we have a, a serious and sometimes it feels like an insurmountable task ahead of us when we look at what's going on. But the answer is Christ. And we need to work really hard as a church, as a, as a community in here, at lifting each other up, strengthening our families, and start having an impact on this world so that we don't continue on the path that we're, that we're going down. Uh, one, one of those examples that family life has provided, like I said, uh, family life is not just uh, for families in crisis, marriages in crisis, but we have testimony after testimony of where couples have come and, and met Christ, and it actually has rescued them. And you never know when that's going to occur. And the next video we're going to show you is, is a story of just that. A family encountered a crisis that no family should ever have to face, but God met them, and God used family life to save their marriage and to turn around and impact their community. So if we could watch that. Last Hi, video. I'm Casey, and this is my wife, Nyla Barrett. We came to our first event um, broken. We had lost our daughter six months before. She was 13 months old. Her name was Quinny, Quinn Elizabeth. On September 16th of 2017, my son and I, Keegan, we were cleaning up the yard. I'm using a small um, Bobcat skid steer that Keegan was operating. And I was getting the last load into the Bobcat. And when I told Keegan to back up, he, um, tractor ran over our precious Quinny. I just remember seeing her laying there and just being out of body. And I, I, at the very instant that I realized what happened, I could feel the presence of God. And I just remember thinking, yea, though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And before I came in the house, I just remember this thought, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And um, I came in the house and, and I was screaming and I gave her to Nyla and Nyla was obviously in disbelief, didn't know what was going on. She was in the kitchen peeling potatoes and um, I, uh, I just told her she's gone. They transported us to the hospital and um Someone came in and told us that they had done everything they could do. We didn't really know what to do. And um, we grieve. We both grieve differently. People grieve differently. And you have a, you have a struggle in your marriage. I don't think that he's doing it right. And he doesn't think that I'm doing it right. And we, we do it a little different. And that's okay. Uh, but we weren't, we weren't sure what to do next. And our... My brother and sister-in-law have served on the Weekend to Remember team with Family Life for several years, and they have been trying to get us to go. We went, and it was absolutely, it was absolutely wonderful. It just, it brought us back to, it brought us back to each other, and it brought us back to the, to the Lord. And we had struggled in our marriage in previous years um, with things, and we were able to just put that put that at rest and be back on the same page again. And we knew that we wanted to share that with other families that without Jesus, we would have never, hmm. never um, gotten through this. I remember leaving there on Sunday and, and thinking this is going to save our marriage. It really is going to save our marriage. It's a struggle. We still have, um, I call them hard days. I don't call them bad days, but we have hard days. And he helps us get through those days. We knew that we were going to get through it, but we didn't want to just get through it. We wanted to flourish through it. And we wanted to see others benefit from Quinny's life. That's, 
that's tragedy turn, turned into triumph, you know. In Isaiah, God says that he won't allow some, he won't allow pain without something new be, to be born. Just a constant reminder to know that Quinny's life is still a blessing. And we know that there's so many questions we have that we would never get answers for. But what a blessing the time that we did have and the answers that we do have in um, 1 Thessalonians 4.13, that we're, where Paul says, we don't want you to grieve as those who have no hope. We have hope. And we just want others to know that there is hope. And we are so grateful that family life was available and right there when we needed it the most. You know, there was days where I would hear the little voice in my head saying, what have you done? You know, what have you done? And I still hear it. This is all Satan. God doesn't do it, but. God will turn it around and God will be the rock for you to put your feet on. And I think that sometimes God allows us to go through such hard times because that's where he wants us. He wants us to, to not have any other choice but to look to him. I'm just overcome with gratitude and everything that we've been through just makes me appreciate the time so much more. Like just the simple things, you know, it's like the best things in life are not things, they're people. Their souls just to be used by the Lord. What a fulfillment, you know, there's nothing more satisfying than to know that the Lord used your brokenness to help somebody else. How about you guys? But that just rips my heart out every time. And we, we got to spend hours with this couple recording that testimony and it's terribly tragic and terribly sad but at the same time it just fills your heart and makes you glorify God because you see how God met them and carried them through and they are an example of so I can't remember the exact statistic but a, a couple that loses a child has a very slim chance of staying married 85%. so 85 percent end in divorce not only is this family still together, they're, they're not just surviving, they're thriving, and they're allowing God to use them to impact marriages and families all around them and all around the world. So we're so thankful for the privilege to be able to help families like this, that they weren't going to make it. They were headed on a trajectory to more of that brokenness. And you saw they had five kids in the picture, and they now have a six. They've had a baby since they lost Quinny. He's a beautiful gift to them, and he's brought a lot of healing to their family. But um, to change the trajectory of this family from that brokenness and that generational cycle, now they're showing their five kids how to keep it together with Christ at the foundation of their home. And as we've walked with them, we hosted a training recently with 800 of our volunteers. They have now become volunteers with us at Family Life and work in their church and are helping strengthen other marriages and families. And they came to our summit. And we had three goals at our summit with our volunteers was to strengthen them personally in their walk with the Lord. COVID has wreaked havoc on so many people's homes through job losses, through um, just the stress of having kids at home, um, just the stress of being afraid of what's going on in the world, all sorts of things. And we wanted to strengthen them personally. The second thing was we used a tool and a skill and a visual to teach them how to share their um, redemption story, whether it was their salvation redemption story or their marriage redemption story, in three minutes um, with anyone that they might meet in a day so that they were prepared to share the gospel in a more um, comfortable fashion so that it was just prepared and ready and they had this, this um, training to be able to do this. And then the third thing was to send them on mission to teach them to pray expectantly every day of their lives for God to be at work around them and how does he want to use their lives so they wouldn't miss opportunities of being used by the Lord. And so after this summit, Nyla and Casey came. Casey reached back out to us, I think it was only three days after the summit, and he's like, I have to share with you what just happened. And so here is a man who could wallow in sorrow for the rest of his life over the tragedy in his family, but God has met him given him such a love for God and what he's done and he wants to share it with other people. He was jogging in the park and he went by a man that was on a different path than him and he said he looked at him and when he looked at him, he, had, he took a double take. He said, there was something that caught my attention and I took a double take, but I didn't catch it at first and I kept jogging and he said about another 10 steps down the path, I all of a sudden got a pain in my leg and it stopped me. 
and all of a sudden it hit him. I had been praying since the summit. You had taught me to pray expectantly for opportunities to share the gospel with someone, and I knew I was supposed to go talk to that man on that path. And he turned, and he went and introduced himself to this man on this path, and this man was totally hopeless. He had come from a foreign country for a job here in the States, but that was right about March when all the COVID stuff hit and his job had vanished. And so he was here in the States with no job, no family, no hope. He did not know what he was doing. He was living on someone's back porch. And Casey was able to use the skills he had learned and share his testimony, and he led that man to the Lord in the park that day. And so we share that just as this is what we do at Family Life. We restore the family, and then that empowers the family to then go out into the community and have a ripple effect. We become very inward focused when we're struggling and when we have issues in our homes and our family, and we're not able to do that outward. And so Brady and I's exhortation to you as families today is don't suffer in silence. So many times the family implodes, and they didn't get help soon enough. Our exhortation is if you're struggling a little bit, or maybe even if you're not struggling, you think your marriage is great, make sure you're still enriching it. Brady always uses the analogy of the tune-up on a truck. If you bought a brand new fancy Ford Chevy, I don't want to offend anybody, truck, and you didn't do any maintenance on that truck, you never bought tires, you never put new oil in it, you just drove that thing, it's not going to function well. A marriage needs to be t maintained, it needs to be worked on, it needs to grow and flourish. And so many of our couples don't realize the red flags that are in their relationships that are heading them towards a crash course soon enough. And so talk to your pastor, talk to people around you. Don't live in shame and hide those things. That's what the enemy uses as secrets to destroy. And come out and ask for the help you need. We've started a marriage mentoring program around the state where we have trained 70 marriage mentors around the state that are in communities and can meet with you and in 10 sessions do a quick assessment with you and find out your high conflict areas and teach you how to resolve those so that they aren't continuing fights in your relationship all within the safety of your home and your community. So there's help out there. That's what we want to offer you guys today. I think that's all we have. Thank you guys. It truly is our pleasure to, to, to be here in Wyoming and uh, just meet with you guys and fellowship mm -hmm. and uh, you know stick around. I, I guess we're gonna have a, a, a bit of a gathering. Uh, love to visit and uh, love to go through a very casual workshop with you guys and hopefully give you guys some skills to uh, communicate and resolve conflict. Mm -hmm. Thank you.